tenth, twenty twenty four. And Mary, would you mind giving the invitation? Absolutely. Let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day and thank you for allowing us all to come together for this um, very important subject matter as it relates to your precious creatures, our animals, and the love that we have for them. We ask that you give us guidance and, and wisdom on how we can make things better for our animal population. And we ask and thank you for our citizens for coming tonight to share with us what we're trying to do and I ask to give us all provided all of us with safe shelter as we leave tonight and go our way in Jesus name amen amen, amen. amen. Okay, I'd entertain a motion for approval of the agenda motion to approve second all those in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. any opposed okay <clears throat> approval of the minutes from July 9th. That was the last time we met. I'd entertain a motion. Uh, motion to approve. Have a second. 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 All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Recognition of the public. Is there anybody that want to speak that hasn't signed up yet? You got time right now if you want to. But um, we'll start with Jennifer Howard. Just state your name and address. Um, the public sure. comments. My name is Jennifer Hallard. I'm at 2201 Highway 31E in Gallup. Um, I wanted to say thank you to our community for showing up today and to the ad hoc committee for your time. Um, recently, I learned from a post on Sumner County Sheriff's Office Animal Control page that nine elementary schools were visited and the story of Biblio Burrow was read to the children. Along with the reading of the story, they also brought a real burrow along with them to all nine of these locations. This sounds like a wonderful and exciting event for these children. The initiative is a great way to connect our community and should be used as a way to educate children about the importance of animal welfare, a more fitting way for some county animal control to be represented. However, I also learned that at the same time, several scheduled appointments, excuse me, Several scheduled appointments for animals at, an, at the Animal Control Center to be spayed and neutered were canceled due to staff shortages. Then to learn that nine elementary schools were visited by Animal Control along with a donkey made me feel that the line of priority of Animal Control may be blurred. As the organization responsible for Animal Control, it is essential that we par they prioritize the core duties, which include providing necessary care and services to the animals in their care. Furthermore, there has been discussion about disbanding this ad hoc committee focused on improving animal control. I would like to emphasize the importance and thankfulness of this committee's role in ensuring that our <clears throat> county's animal control services, along with the community's forward thinking and rapid growth, by working together, we can improve communication, foster continuous growth, and make necessary improvements better serve both the animals in the care of animal control and the community as a whole. Um, lastly, I believe that the ad hoc committee's efforts, we can strike the right balance between promoting community engagement like <coughs> readings at school, but perhaps focusing those readings on humane education about dogs and cats and providing the necessary services to animals at animal control. This will ultimately allow us to give animals a better chance at finding a loving home at a safe and well cared for environment and a place where families can come to find that dog or cat that they may have learned about at one of Sumner County Animal Control's elementary school visits. Thank you. Thank you. David Arlen. Good evening, all. Thank you again for coming. My name is David Arlen. I live at 231 Chippeway Drive. And tonight, besides speaking for myself, I am also speaking on behalf of Kathy Arlen, my lovely wife, who fortunately for me also lives on 231 Chippewa Drive. <laughs> uh, she regrets that she could not be here tonight, but duty calls. Toyota says she has to attend a dealer's meeting in Las Vegas. Ooh. So she left this one at 3.30 and I gave her some extra shirts in case she loses one at the table. <laughs> that way she can come home without incident. <laughs> Uh, 
it. Our information that we would like to share with you and see what we can do to improve things is as such. As we move into the fall, we want the ad hoc committee to know that we truly appreciate the continued efforts to improve Sumner County Animal Control. Our goal was and remains to bring Sumner County Animal Control into a new era of animal control that embraces current animals sheltering protocols and results in a better outcome for the animals and true transparency of the operations. We want the committee to be aware of several things that have surfaced recently. First, the intake page link on the Sumner County Animal Control Facebook page does not function and multiple browsers have tried. Next, animals still not being fixed before adoption. Next, one example of a dog posted on Facebook by the adopter showed a clearly unaltered male. Next, one example of a bully type male dog on Facebook which stated that the dog was not fixed. This post was edited once people started asking questions and they deleted the reference entirely. Bully breeds should never be adopted unaltered. Next, a dog was lost from animal control on Saturday, September the 6th and did not reopen until today. The owners thankfully found the dog. Next, on September 9th, an unneutered male bully dog with a head tilt received no veterinary attention until taken into rescue. How long was this dog without veterinary care? Next, a stray puppy with a possible injury was turned away. The finder was told that the pup would be euthanized, so they were referred to safe place for animals who took it. Next, a cane corso named Cupcake was sent to Sumner Spay Neuter Alliance with an incomplete kennel card. It was taken by rescue, no vaccinations, no dewormer or medical notes on the kennel card. The dog's weight was written on the card when it was noted that the dog was going to Sumner Spay Neuter Alliance. A chip was recorded on this dog with no additional notes about the research of the chip. These are rudimentary requirements in animal sheltering. Next, another dog named Blue surrendered. It's a bully breed needed veterinary care and was left without it for several days. The kennel card stated the dog was surrendered on September 3rd and it was taken in by rescue on September the 6th. Again, no notes on the kennel card. This dog was unfortunately unable to be saved and was euthanized by the rescue. Why are animals left suffering over so many days? Uh, that concludes, but I do like to say again, things don't happen overnight, good things take a while. Just as a side note, I hope this is okay to say this, I am 67, I recently recorded a CD containing 10 songs I wrote, some in high school, some in college, 13 years ago I wrote one for Kathy, it is finally on a CD, I was told today it was just produced today in New Jersey. Mm. All of you at this table will get a free copy oh. to encourage you to continue. <laughs> Not because the songs are any good, but just I'm thankful that we have a group like this and a great turnout tonight coming yes. here. Uh, and I might have some extra copies for you guys too. Um, but again, my stage name or nickname is Baby Arbelin. I was a baby of the family and it's called Out of the Crib. Uh, one of our persons here out uh, of she actually did the talk before me on this, but anyway, coming soon to a Spotify near you and to all of you next month. Assuming you meet here, and I hope you do, because you're doing a good job, just keep at it. Because in my case, it took 50 years, hopefully, it takes less than that for you guys to make it good for Summer County Animal Shelter. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, sir. Heather Jones. Yes, name and, and uh, address, please, for the public record. Um, my name is Heather Jones. Address is 131 Walton Trace South in Hendersonville. Um, I'm 41. I've lived here since I was 10, so I've been here a while. 
Um, I'm the manager of the Humane Society, and I am the rescue that took the dogs that he was talking about. Cupcake is now hostess. Um, she will be getting adopted <laughs> soon. She is vetted now fully, and we got her fit. Spay and neuter said bring her now, and I was already at the pound, so I just went ahead and took her home to get her fixed. She is a wonderful girl. Um, the other one <clears throat> that he was talking about, the pity named Blue. So. I pull from the pound often, as often as possible. The pound actually does help sometimes. Like I have someone with a dog I will take. I have no space. Sometimes I can talk to Catherine out there and get her to let said dog come in, knowing I will come pick up said dog as soon as I possibly can. Um, but I do go in and I typically pick the broken ones or the ones that are the most damaged, knowing they are a harder adoption, but with us being a no-kill rescue, typically we can work with those things. Um, when I saw Blue, he was not moving, and I thought he was dead, to be honest, because he would not he would not move, and he had an aggressive label on his card. And I do this a lot, especially with pity, so when I spoke with them, I'm like, I don't know if he is aggressive or not, but something is wrong, he is not moving, can I, like, go in and meet him can i pull him like can i do anything to help with him because he is just laying here and something is very wrong so um she made a call and he said i could go ahead and take him he showed no aggression however he could not walk this dog collapsed to the ground multiple times like from me picking him up to me getting him to a vet so we're talking about four to six hours max probably really two to four hours I found a vet that would finally see him um, all the way at Harding Place, and she did, I do have the medical vetting records, I mean, she did blood work, she did a heartworm test, which sadly was negative, when normally that's our number one problem. Um, he actually was neutered, which was not noted on the card, and then when she did the x-ray, she found a chip. So still working on getting all the chip info and finding out who that actual owner was if it was the woman that called and said the dog had bitten her. Um, while taking him to the vet, she's like, you know, he may have been hit by a car, this could be neurological, there, there were a variety of things she came across. Ultimately, we got to the ultrasound where she found tumors inside him and um, some form of like a blockage and the spleen was enlarged. So. I spent all day with this dog crying with a dog that I had just met because he may have been aggressive but at this point he was so ill there was no strength to be aggressive if that was the case. I do personally believe the dog was sick and the woman knew it and she pawned it off on the pound by saying it bit her because no one ever saw a bite. Mm -hmm. um, and she's like an 80 plus year old lady on oxygen in a wheelchair. That dog bit her she'd have been in the emergency room. <clears throat> So I don't know about that part, but I did pull him and after spending from 12 o'clock in the afternoon till 7 o'clock that night with this dog at a vet out in Harding Place, ultimately they did have to put him down um, because of all of the factors that were wrong in addition to the neurological, which if he did do that, it is possible, but he was sick and there were other problems. I do know the person that picked him up and she said when she picked him up, he actually hopped up in the truck. He was walking and moving. However, when I saw him, he was not moving like he was not moving, period. So we were able to get him up in the car, and I know there's protocol for bite hole and rabies and all of those things, but I feel like there has to be a cutoff point where they, if they're suffering and it's not going to be fixed, and if it is an aggressive guy, he, he should have been put down sooner knowing what was going on instead of just letting him sit there and, and basically suffer. Um, he just had a lot going on that was wrong with him and he ended up being like eight or nine when we thought he was a little bit younger. But I did have to put him down due to said situation of all of the things combined just not being able to, to fix what was wrong. Again, heartworm negative and neutered, which was sad because that's typically those things that get him moved out a lot quicker. But he, he did have some issues. And then with the cane corso, it was just like, let me take her and get her fixed. Like, they're just going to breed her. And they had a Frenchie come in and the same thing. And they did actually fix the Frenchie. I will give them credit for that because I was like, I will pay for it out of my pocket. Fix him. They are going to use him to breed. There, mm -hmm. that, there's no question to that. So that one did get fixed and get adopted, 
Um, but on a side note with that, for the most part, I'd say medical stuff and then just fixing them. They, they got to be fixed before they go to people. And we have people all the time wanting to foster because we have a foster program, but their other dog's not fixed. Then you're not fostering my dog because my dog's not fixed and there's a reason yours isn't fixed and unless your vet has a medical reason, there's no reason for your dog not to be fixed. So turn away a lot of people for fostering because they clearly want to breed the dogs. Whether they're pits or it doesn't matter. People are stupid and think they can make money off of it. They really can't. A good breeder really doesn't make money. They just keep the breed line pure. But fixing is a big deal. And then just the medical, like somebody just coming in to see them. Even, like I said, with the bite history, I get that. But And I know you have to cut their head off to rabies test them and all, but that seems like that's something that might should have been done for this dog specifically because he was just not moving. Mm -hmm. Now Catherine did say he looks sick and I'm like, so what's gonna be done? Mm -hmm. And I don't think she had thought about it and proceeded that far before I just said, please just let me take him. I, I will figure something out just so he's not sitting here suffering. Mm -hmm. But he, he did ultimately have to be put down. Normally it doesn't go that way, but I do get a lot where we have their cards that don't have, they have a chip and like the King Corso, it's registered to Romania, but it's not registered to a human. It's just in room. So he's gonna have to get a whole separate chip because they can't fix the old chip or she. So just checking them and knowing whether they're neutered or not or spayed and that kind of thing too. And then I'd say just the cat thing. I agree with not taking tips in the barrels, but like just cats in general, I mean, it's still going to take cats, I would think, because we end up with them ourselves if they don't. But we also pulled like 10 from them, mamas and babies that were all like four weeks old. So I do try to pull what I can when I can to help them and the animals and the community in general. And that's pretty much it. Thank you. Fine. Thank you. Guys. Yes, sir. Okay, that will close uh, recognition of the public. Report of the Chair, I'm going to take this opportunity to uh, read the email that I sent out last month in lieu of having a meeting. Um, I sent out some questions that could be used to report back to have this meeting rather than just have a dead period. Um, I didn't get a response, so I sent out another email on, um, let's see, September 3rd. So I combined the two in here, so I'm going to read, read the whole thing just for public record. Good morning all. I had sent parts of this email last month hoping to get some answers to the public during the period we did not meet. I have not received any reply from the Sheriff's Department. That was near a time of immense turmoil, so grace is of course given. Um, for those of you that remember, that's when the Sheriff had passed away. Uh, everyone in the public is keeping a sharp eye on statements that have been made on what seemed to be an agreeable path going forward. Some of the changes recommended by Dr. Pisano were very dependent on whether or not the budget requests made by Sheriff Craddock were approved. To my knowledge, he got the money that pertains to the animal control that would enable two part-time non-deputy employees to be hired ASAP. The other elements that were discussed multiple times throughout the last several months were the mandatory vaccination and spay and neuter that would be implemented. This was to be done within the old budget perimeters. Um, this was very dependent on the relationship with Dr. Sarah over at Sumner Spay and Neuter Alliance. I will post the body of the email I sent out last month in case it was missed. And this was the original email. Questions from previous email. Lieutenant Matthews, I know we asked for some things in the last meeting that we were going to report back on. One in particular was the relationship status with Sarah at Sumner Spay and Neuter Alliance. Can you respond with the status via this email? I hope that the relationship is back on and the, and the commutes to the Kentucky facility each week are no longer necessary. Can you also give the percentage of animals that are getting spayed, neutered now compared to the goal we all agreed, which should be 100%. 
In closing, I'll add these on the agenda for our September 10th meeting. We've explained that many changes that were agreed upon would have to wait until the budget passed. It will be good for the public to see the progress thus far. Thus far. Thanks. So, I got a response yesterday after a month and a half from Sheriff Craddock. And it, it reads, I apologize for the delay. What is the relationship status with Sarah at Summer Span Neuter Alliance? So this is his response. Captain Carl McCoy, who's the new um, new person over that position, reached out to Sarah and had a phone call, phone conversation where he requested a meeting to mend the relationship and forge a path forward. Our goal is to spay and neuter every animal. Sarah was in the middle of a couple of things that required her time and attention and stated it would be a couple of weeks or so before she could be available. We're waiting for Sarah's availability. Also, the Franklin, Kentucky location is still being utilized when they have, abil when they have ability. Lieutenant Tarlacki did speak to another vet in the area about a potential partnership. We will continue to pursue all options. We have actively engaged with other rescues to move animals out of the shelter more efficiently. Our animal control personnel contacted 19 animal rescue agencies requesting assistance. Of the 19 rescues contacted, eight animals were relocated from our shelter to theirs. Requested percentages of animals spayed or neutered upon adoption. That was the second question. We are not at the goal of 100%. The lack of appointments, um, I'm assuming he's made available appointments with Dr. Sarah, has contributed to this. Until we can work out other options, which we are actively pursuing, we will continue to spay and neuter the animals when there is availability. We will continue to adopt the animals per the law with the deposit and the refund of the deposit upon the animal being spayed or neutered. Dr. Pisano, also recommended the adoptions continue in this manner until we have established enough services to reach our goal of 100% spayed and neutered animals. Other updates, the animal control policies are in their final review. Last week we held a meeting consisting of Captain McCoy, Lieutenant Tarlacki, Deputy Spray, Lieutenant Matthews, and Dr. Pisano. This meeting was regarding the final review of the policies Dr. Pisano made a few more recommendations and those changes were being codified. The county attorney and I will have to review the policy prior to implementation. I've attached photos of the new outdoor play areas for the dogs. We are thankful they were approved in the budget. We have received quotes on the washer and dryer and are excited to proceed with the procurement process. Respectfully, Sheriff Craddock. So I'm glad I got some kind of response just in regards to some of the things that are being done with approvals that happened um, with budgeted items but I was hoping for more with regards to the punch list that we kind of all mutually agreed upon at this table um, I know the citizens are asking for more because I get inundated with with people that are upset they're, they're frustrated with how slowly this process is taking. Somebody remind me, I think, was it October yes. of last yeah, year that yeah. we started this? We're coming up on a year. Mm -hmm. And um, we've got direction, we've got goals, we've got money now, yeah. mm -hmm. but haven't seen a whole lot of progress. And I think people just want to know that something is on the horizon. Just something is, is coming and you know the, the dogs got better play areas they have better conditions these are all wins the cats have better conditions because they're not as crowded but at the end of the day we've got less animals being taken in and not really any more changes other than that because of the relationship statuses with um the one dependent person that's willing to step up and do something in the county with Dr. Sarah over at Summer Spain. Um, 
I don't understand why that relationship is so hard to mend. We've we've got a letter from her also stating her side of that. I'm sure that's going to come up sometime in the meeting. Um, but I hope I'm conveying the correct emotion of frustration. I do not want to pick a fight with anybody, but I want to voice the citizens' um, concerns here at this table because that's my job as a, as a county commissioner. So with that, I'm going to end the report of the chairman, and we're going to go into old business, and that will give you guys opportunities to chime in on some of these things, okay. maybe have some answers, or um, uh, Lieutenant Matthews may have more to add um, since the letter was written, or he may have been given some, some directives to inform us about also. So anyway, I'm going to move on to um, the update on policies and procedures. This is the next item that's coming up under old business. Um, is basically what Sheriff Craddock conveyed in the letter, kind of where you're at, still waiting on kind of one hundred percent lawyer. Yes, sir. The reviews time. are done. Uh, they went to far as the changes, the last changes that the doctor recommended. They have been finalized. Uh, gone, went to or going to uh, Sheriff Craddock for review, and then the county attorney will review. Uh, if both of them are satisfied with the final product at that time, they'll be released. Okay. They so will not. Something for sure they will not month. be released until they are satisfied with the product. Do you think you'll have something by next month? I would hope that we had already had something. But yeah. Yes. Giving the final uh, review that was done and the changes that was recommended uh, were, I would say, uh, not major. There was minor terminology and stuff like that. Uh, but like I said, they've worked very hard in, in trying to put uh, the rules, regulations, and stuff that will reflect will reflect on that current current uh, policies and uh, proper procedure uh, that other agencies are, are doing also at this time. So they feel pretty confident that they'll have a complete product and and uh, hopefully a lot of good comments from that. Okay, that's just up there. Okay. Uh I, I'm probably going to say something. I'm trying. I'm going to try to be as uh, tough love yet, and what I'm, I'm going to say is probably going to sting a bit. And it's only because you know when you when you deal with and you're in the corporate arena, and you're approaching a year and you don't have protocols, it's a bedrock of how your your functionality will be in any kind of a system. And I personally have been requesting, regardless of where they're at, and you always have to look at, here's your baseline, and where were we in, in even in October protocol, and here we are nearly a year later and we don't have them, to me that is probably an Achilles heel of why some things are going awry and why animals are still suffering. What I'm gonna preference is, the great. this is a Gandhi quote, and it, and it has to resonate with everybody I think in this room and me. I'm a citizen and I'm on this board because I have a love of animals and I do rescue and adopt all my life. And this is the, also, how does our county look? And I want our county to be exceptional. I think we all do. And be competitive with other counties that are large like us. And I think it's a model problem, in my opinion, what I'm going to say. The greatest greatness of a nation, I can substitute that with a county, and its moral progress can be judged by the way its animals are treated. And so what I'm seeing here and what I'm hearing here are a few things. A year later, no protocols that we can see as a committee, which would be a mandatory in any you know, public sector, private sector, should be mandatory. Because who's on first? Who's doing what? Why are things not a well-oiled machine like other places are? And there are also other places doing a lot more on a very shoestring budget. So I'm, I'm going to take out of the equation finances because there's funding, there's financing, it's still problems. And for me to hear animals are suffering for days on end, it, it hurts my heart. Okay? Um, especially pities because I love that breed in particular the most, the ones that go through the worst. And when I see a response, albeit 
a month later. And we shouldn't have to be waiting for months cycles either. We have internet, we have um, this lovely thing here where we should be getting updates on the right column for us to see, easy, very easy to read, how we can see progress even on a weekly basis. We could get an email report on a weekly basis so that when we come here, we're not kicking the can out a whole month because we're not dealing with widgets. We're not dealing with plastics and like other corporate entities and logistics. We're dealing with animal lives. And time is not on their side. And when things aren't done right, they suffer or they're euthanized. And there are probably homes out there that would like to have them and live beautiful lives. And it's a win-win because I think animals save us too many times. So when I look at just, I'm going to look at just a response. And I know that there are certain things that happen, but in any entity, people may not be there. People go on vacation. There has to be someone to take the lead. And if I don't see head leadership at this table for nearly a year, it, it sends very unfortunate messages like there's just a lack of, of care or concern. I'm just going to state the obvious. Advertising, we said never overlook the obvious. And if our bedrock in reducing intakes is spay and neuter, and we can't even go, get past go on that, that's an issue. So, and then I'm going to give a solution to the problems, more than likely. Captain Carl McCoy, I don't know his title. Please give me the title. I don't know. So I'm going to... Captain, Captain Carl, Carl McCoy. McCoy. And Captain is his In title. terms of what does he do in terms of... He's in charge of... Of, of what? Of all of animal control. Okay, so I did okay. not know that. So he oversees animal control and the school resource. Okay, so that would be very helpful to say, this is, it's like an org chart. This person does this so that we can all wrap our heads around about operational and how to fix where they're, then you can find where the holes are in operations too. So I don't, didn't know that, so thank you for clarifying. And is that person kind of functioning as an animal control director as I see models as animal control director. He's supervisor. Okay. He's functioning as a manager, not an animal control um, a manager at the location. Okay. So that would be helpful to have name, uh, uh, purview, org chart, operation, because this, this is a big thing. If you can't get a route, then we can't figure out where and collectively work together to, to fix where the things are happening. And so... Uh, Waiting for availability, 11 months, and there's no communication. That, to me, is just very troubling, and it's very concerning. Um, no, what vets were being spoken to? Can we get a list of vets that were contacted? Who? When? When and who? So that we can have an accounting of touch points and what's actually happening. Uh, we engage with other resources. Which ones? Specificity, to me, is very important because you're going to find things rather than generalities, especially when we're still hearing these issues that are uh, unfortunate. Uh, we're not at 100% goal. Well, why? I mean, there, there are reasons for things. Uh, established enough services, specificity. Again, specificity. And I think what would be really helpful is if this is a great little thing, that this gets filled in and we get it distributed to our team because our team needs to know what's happening pretty much in real time, and you could do that when you have emails and stuff and shared emails. So I think what's happening here, in my opinion, and, and, and I have a love of animals, so I'll dedicate a lot of hours to try to go from heartbreakingly 50 to 70% euthanization rates, which hurts my heart and soul too, and getting on this committee to make a difference collectively because we have to do this and we have to get intelligence to know exactly what's happening. I've even requested uh, within, with the trustees what's the cost because there are hard costs involved not free uh, so that we can wrap our heads around this model isn't working and this is not the proper call because of a cost and also what good looks like how do we open up a facility so it's feeling very welcoming and if this is an Achilles heel, then that Achilles heel is not where we need to be and what we need to do because you could have volunteers, part-timers, whatever it is because there are costs involved in trustees. And I need to wrap my head around that because I want to quantify stuff. I haven't gotten that information either, which I would love to have. 
But for all of my research too, and I've, I've looked at Paws, I've looked at National Humane, you guys and the Sheriff's Department, you're great at this, which is field ops. This is what you're great at. Engaging with the people, understanding of law, law enforcement. How do we get the citizens to do their part to care for animals? Because it's often what's on the other side of the leash. And animal lives, again, hang in the balance. You guys do that great. Why can't we do that similarly? Because it seems to work in other places from a model perspective. And then there's an animal control director who also has underneath them, and that way they can engage and work with volunteers. They're getting animals adopted. I see things because I'm on a lot of forums. These people are get up and go. They coordinate. They get someone to pick up the animals. Some animals are in need, just like what was happening here within community. We're not able to do that a year downstream. I'm hoping that we can do better and there's ways to rapidly get that done. But for what I'm seeing and I'm hearing is a model issue, possibly an operational issue, getting the right people in position to do what they do best is always critical. So in the absence of any protocols, who's doing what, and still to this day, we can't sit here collectively to say, oh, there's this is right here. And if we fix this, this can happen. But if we're not caring for these animals because we lack veterinary care, if we can't get them spayed and new, we can't achieve adoptions. We're talking basics and baselines. And if we can't do the foundational stuff, then we're just constantly kicking the can and kicking the can and we're spinning our wheels. I want to see progress and growth, but not two months and still getting and not getting real-time answers. With electronics and data sharing, we can get real-time animal answers because animal lives, we're looking at papers and data, and we keep forgetting there's a suffering pity. There are animals not getting chipped or not getting neutered, not getting adopted, and we want to get them in and out, but we want to avoid them getting in to begin with. So can we please, in the absence of all the other this is going to happen. I want to see protocol. You're operating on something. And if I can have that, you know, by Friday, I'll be very happy. So give me the opportunity to take a look at it, and I'll do that over my weekend. Because it has to be done. We have to see operate at a very basic operationals. And if these things are filled in, if we can have that filled in as well, so that we can do a compare and contrast, and we'll manage and we'll see our progress and I think that will also help alleviate a lot of frustration because I sit at this table and I am frustrated for the very reasons I disclosed tonight. Thank you. Um, Lieutenant Matthews, if that becomes available, as soon as it becomes available, will you email it out to the to I will the relay the request as I always do from whatever information comes and then the sheriff will make the decision what, and if he's, what he's going to do and if he's going to do it. Thank you. I have a question. Yes. Have, have we ever had a policy and procedures? Uh, yes, ma'am. Could we could we get a copy it's of a the mute point. original? Just I'll just to tell you, it's a mute point at this part well, because well, the well, new ones are coming out. So whatever old, it's a mute point because we're going to be operating it, under the new ones. It could maybe again we could see if we have made progress. What was being done? I mean, yeah, you do we to have, have a, a policy? Sure, they I had one when I was over there. But like I said, in all likelihood, it's a mute point because of the new operation procedures that's going to take place. So whatever was done before, y'all want to see comparison, we're doing this, it doesn't matter. I will, I'm sure if he's got it, he'll give it to you, but it doesn't matter. And that's me talking. That's not the sheriff's office. That's refine that. That's Joe Matthews talking. Uh, that that doesn't matter, and the reason why it doesn't matter is because of when you go to something, these are new policies and procedures, the old ones are gone. Well, I'm just, it's, it's taking, it, I mean, it seems to be such a big chore to, to get it done. I just wonder, are you just starting from scratch, or is, is You know, it took almost basis? three years to rewrite policies at the sheriff's office on general everyday things that the sheriff officers and deputies do. Well, I mean, that's ridiculous. Really. No, it's not. <laughs> it's because you're not involved or you don't have, just be honest, Mr. Chairman, don't have all the facts 
or involved on how things work and, and what is going on. Uh, like I said, these things that you think you can sit down and you take 463 policies and just rewrite them in a day or two, you can't do that. It takes time. And, and like I said, I, what I would like, Mr. Chairman, I'd like for each one at this table to go on and, and give me all their complaints and all the problems, and I'm going to address every one of them right here tonight. Every one of them, I've, I bet you I've got an answer for them. Well, we're going to keep going through the agenda the way it is right now. I want to, you, you're still up the floor, Ms. Diana. No. So, you, you done? Go ahead. I'm, I'm going to need to say this because it has to be said. When you're operating, you don't have new. New is out here somewhere. We are here in real time today. You cannot be operating on absolutely nothing. You're operating on something. And that's something we should already have had because that request has been two months ago request because we didn't meet last time. And that should have been had because again, you know, look, I've, I've worked in a very heavily regulated environment where the FDA and we had, you know, you want to talk about legalities, medical, legal, regulatory, and three years to do things and, and then say we have no protocols and it doesn't matter. That would never be uttered in any boardroom or any entity, especially when you're dealing with public policies as well in the pharmaceutical arena. So what I'm trying to say is, you're operating on something today. We don't have anything at all, and what are you operating today? And that could easily be sent because it's a today and a yesterday and a 15 year, whatever how long the purview has been. And so here we are, and that's been a request of two months ago, and still, we even said, it doesn't matter if it's just little language, tweaks here and there. To me, that doesn't matter to me. You're operating on something. I don't want to wait all the way out here. I like, I'm a citizen, and I'm making that request, and I've made it two months ago, and it's unacceptable to not have what was requested. Because on FOIA, it would be seven days, freedom of information, and this is now 60 days, and we still don't have it. So I have to say that from a legality perspective too. So can we please have that? regardless and also I must add it is not helpful to hear well if somebody wants to do it they're going to do that this under if I'm not mistaken there is a Tennessee code annotated that I have read that the purview of animal control is within the power of the legislature and legislature because I understand what that means is County Commission slash mayor so, as a citizen, and we are to instruct our elected officials accordingly through our Constitution, that we are to instruct. And as a citizen, and also someone on this, this meeting and this ad hoc committee, which I thank God that I'm a part of, somebody has to move the needle for the animals, and, I, and it has to happen. So my request today is going to be, I'd like to see in my inbox, by Friday, current protocols that are followed, organizational chart, who's doing what, what's the title, and what is their job description. And therefore, we can now have a basic, this is basic, it's rudimentary, it's not, understanding of how this is working, and then have an understanding of how do we fix what's not working, it's still not working. So. That's going to allow all of us to take care of this issue collectively. Lieutenant Matthews, will you forward Thank that you. request on to the chair? As, uh, and I will reiterate, every request that's been made out of this committee has been forwarded. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Appreciate um, you. If, if, if there is something currently there, and if we could have it by um, Friday, Friday uh, again, if possible. Again, I will relay the request. But that's I, all I'm asking. That's all I can that's, do. That's what I'm asking. Go ahead. That's, uh, above, that's, that's above my grade. Commissioner Janine, go ahead. <laughs> I have a couple questions. Um, I know we started in October of last year, 23, and then Dr. Fasano came in April, April and so April. of 24. April. So we were October, November, December, January, February, March. We were six months out before she came into the picture with the, and during the first six months, I know that we had talked about policy, we had requested policy. We also had um, copies of some policies. I do remember seeing that. 
but um, Dr. Pisano came in, the presentation was done, there was a review, the Sheriff's Department accepted it, they wanted to work with them, and I'm not making excuses for anyone because I'm not that way. I, I, if you really wanted to hear what I had to say, you probably don't want to hear what I have to say. But what I, I'm going to say is that for six months, we worked through what we could, and then we had the grant, and we had the, the, study. the study, which was fantastic, and now we're trying to work through it. But my, prob my, my, vi my thought is that I see we're trying to make a difference. They're trying to help. But I think they have, they have, first of all, I've never met, I've never seen the director of the facility. He's never come to our meeting. Mm -hmm. He d chooses not to come. And that I like, that's where I feel like, you know, I, I know that he comes because he ha he's asked to come and he likes to come. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate him being here. Mm -hmm. But for, for one, almost one year, I have never seen the director come to the meeting we've requested he's not come he's too busy this is scheduled this or that but my problem is is that here we are six April May June July August we're in six months now so we've got six months we were working through a process we got a review now we're at six months into that process do I think we've made some headway yeah I do I think we do but we have other issues and I, I understand that they've been trying to work on the policies. I know that that was some, and, and they're reviewed, they're looking at them, they're gonna bring them forward. I do agree there should be some formidable policy manual that should have been out there for anybody to look at. I don't know where that is. At this point, I feel like, you know, if you're writing policies, you had to have a policy that you worked from. If it's taking you three years to write a policy, then you didn't have a policy. Mm -hmm. It takes you a lot. I mean, I've written policies. I know. And so I'm not dogging the sheriff's department. I'm not. But I think that in the light of, I've heard the relationship issue with spay and neuter. That's been going on for a year. And we've, I feel like, I feel like that We've been tap dancing. Mm -hmm. I feel like we're tap dancing. And I don't know. I mean, I want this ad hoc committee to continue because we owe it to the citizens mm -hmm. to fix this. Mm -hmm. If it takes me by myself, I think we need to, it needs to stay in place. However, if we t keep tap dancing, we're never getting anywhere. And eventually, it's going to be snuffed. And that's what I'm worried about. And so I feel like if if we can get some, he, he does what he says he does. He reports mm -hmm. back. That's what he's supposed to do. But if we at least could have leadership come and at least talk to us every once in a while, every quarter, every six months, just say, hey, we understand your frustrations, except I'm not getting on Sheriff Craddock because he just got that spot. Yeah. I get it, and he's, I know he's trying. However, we can't, we can't keep, like she said, kick the can down the road. This is bureaucratic garbage to me. And who, 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 who is the, and Who's at the end of this? Who's who's the receiving end of this? It's the animals. And so I get he I, I want to see the new policies. I would like to have some even if you, I don't have to have your the book. Maybe just a synopsis of what you had. I don't need every piece of paper. Okay. Well, so the chart. request has been made. Yep. He's going to forward the request. I'd like to move on to the next item. Well, I mean, you can cut me off, but I, no, I just... I, I, and I don't mean to. I, want, I, I do want you to get to the point, though, as far as if it's about policies and procedure and, and you want it, 
then that's clear and we've asked for it and that's all we can do. But if you want to talk more about it, I want to hear more of what you have to say if there's more than just the request. Well, if there's a policy about spay and neuter already in place, then seriously, what's the... What's it's the been point? stated what that is. Yeah. They're doing I mean, it, it doesn't with the certificate that right. they get with the deposit. And we've came that, up that with some, the beginning. We've came up with some great solutions. I really do think we've done a lot in this year. I honestly do, because I know what it was like when we first walked in this door. And I know he's in the middle. Mm -hmm. And I, I and I understand his his situation, but that we're also in the middle too. So I'll leave it at this. I think that we need to start really, um, I would appreciate, like I asked before for him, for leadership to show up. I've asked that several times and I was told that he would respond back and then that one last time was the guy was too busy. Well, too busy to, for what? You know? If I told my boss I was too busy, they would say, okay, go go and find another job. Yeah, you'd be gone. To, I'm and the done. Point, and, and I could answer this question, This uh, I could make this statement for Lieutenant Matthews to, to their point, we're not their boss. We're not their boss. And that's the point of frustration yeah. that the public has with us. Ms. Sopo is right. Animal control does fall under the purview of the county. Mm -hmm. We have given it to the Sheriff's Department. We Therefore, we have released responsibility of it. We can't always take it back. Mm -hmm. But we're not choosing to do that right now. And that's something that you'd have to talk to all your commissioners about mm -hmm. and try to get all the votes on. And that's a that's a huge undertaking so we're trying our best to make this work because it makes a lot of sense to have the people that are doing the work to pick up the animals to do the other part of it it has worked in other counties other states um, we're just kind of at a point of growth here and learning and best practices so it's worth it to try to make this work but you are right in your statement that, that you made um, it's a model. I, I don't want to hear it anymore that you know that we can't do anything about it is basically what is being said to the citizens by saying it to this board but I think we just need to keep pressing for more information we've done that we've asked for the for the request hopefully it can bring us back something by the end of this week because they are operating on something and if they're not operating on anything that's going to be a great point of frustration because that means they're juggling animals well, I will tell you that Dr. Pisano looked at their policies and procedures. So they have them. So they're not absent. I understand that they're saying it's moot because they're changing, but they've been changing for a long time, and we want to see what they've been this whole time. I understand your point of frustration. The request is being made. That being said, if there's nothing else on procedures and documentation. I want to move on to foster care application review, but since that was not mentioned in the letter, as far as any update with that, I'm thinking that's probably in the policies and procedures, and if it is, we won't, we won't stick around with that issue and, and belabor the point. Just say that no, and okay. we'll move on. I got information. Okay, great. Uh, a reference to that, uh, what has been decided, uh, it's in reference to work that you have approved as of uh, August when we had the meeting approved the budget that had the two part-time staff in that budget for approval. Uh -huh. uh, we are taking applications and uh, on that to get them on board and of course they've got to be vetted whoever wants to it's because it is a law enforcement agency over it they got to be vetted so the background checks and everything you got to do. What uh, my understanding and speaking personally with uh, Lieutenant Tarlacki and Captain McCoy is that one of the part-timers' uh, main job is going to be the foster care program mm -hmm. to get it up, first priority to get it up and running. I remember hearing that. The second uh, uh, part-timer is going to be responsible or uh, put in effect for volunteers to start to get that program up and running as part of their other duties as, as, as needed. You're going to look at the part-time uh, hours 
uh, it's 29 to 32 hours there. They have to be below a certain amount. To keep them or, in full time benefits. Yeah, right. the full time. Uh, and their hours of operation, uh, it appears, uh, by looking at it and talking to Dr. Bizzano and stuff like that, uh, 2 p.m. in the afternoon until 7 at night uh, is, is the basic that they're looking at. Uh, reason being is number one, uh, Dr. Rosano said uh, uh, want to make sure the animals aren't left over a period of time. Uh, so they, she recommended somebody working to at least 7 p.m. at night. Uh, personally, I would like to have somebody to work to about 11 or 12 o'clock tonight uh, at night if they didn't do anything but walk around and tend to the, the uh, kennels. But nonetheless, that extends the hours, right? It extends the hours, that's correct. So typically, it closes at what? 4.30. 4 yeah. Yes. Uh, so they're going to extend the hours. Uh, and with those other hours when people do get off work and stuff uh, would open up. You know, most people work to 4 or 5. That would give them the opportunity after they get off work to come by the shelter, talk about volunteering or doing things there, whatever the case would be. But that is the tentative plans for the two part-timers. Any idea how many applicants you've had? I do not at this point. And like I said, my understanding from then talking with uh, Sheriff Craddock was that uh, we can't, couldn't do anything until the finances were done. But they're and, open now. And now the finance is done, and then they're seeking applications for people to come in. So the process is open right now. Yeah. Everybody hear that? Spread the word. We need to fill the, them up. Where are the jobs posted? I y'all would have to get further with Craddock to see how that's working. I don't know if it's been. People just coming in and fill, filling some out, word of mouth, or what? Uh, but yeah, no, it's, we're open for those positions to come in. If you're interested, come out and fill an application. I don't know how you please, do that. the quicker they can do that, the quicker we get those applications filled out, the quicker we start the background checks. Please check the websites, and if they're not on the websites, we can convey to them that we'd like to see that on there just ASAP because I think these fine people will do their best to try to fill those and send you all the people you want. And the other thing is uh, that they did approve in the budget, just to let, let you know, they did approve another IT person for the sheriff's, for the sheriff's office. Department. Yeah. So that's going to do wonders in the ability to progress more rapidly through things also. Is that going to affect the website? It's going to affect several things control? the sheriff's office. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, the gentleman that we had doing it was doing it for the whole sheriff's office. That means everything, the jail, every division, we got everything. So sometimes it took a lot longer to get things done because it's one person. Uh, now they're going to have two. They're going to divide those duties up. And so as anything would tell, when one person, you put two, you just cut your time. Has that person been hired yet? They were interviewing today. Okay, when that name is um, found, whichever one is the one tasked with the responsibility, and I would advise one of them, not both of them. So we're not tag team. But whenever that one is, his job description is laid out, would you give us that name of who the IT person is for that? Because yes, sir. if there's issues with the website or suggestions or things that we've kind of wanted um, from Dr. Pisano's suggestions and all that we can follow up with, that'd be great for the That is correct. Right. Yes, sir, we'll do that. Can I take some, have you take some questions now? Sure, yeah. Okay, who's in queue first? Thank you. you go, uh, go ahead. Uh, go ahead, Ms. Diana. The, um, <coughs> the, the intake link uh, has been down for weeks, and I think someone called them about it, and they said, well, we didn't know. So I'm not sure. You aware of that? It's no, I, I, yeah, it's, I can uh, make a quick But I mean, I don't, you know, they, they posted like 133 pictures of the, the borough. So I don't know how the borough can get on there, but you're saying the intake. You're talking about the animals up for adoption or the animals. Uh, I think uh, the the uh, stray, uh, you know, the stray ones. The that, pickups. Yeah, the pickups, so that people can see if they've lost their pet, they can get on there. And they said it has been down for weeks. 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 I'll uh, see if I can get an I'm answer right now. I'm not a computer person, so that would not be me because I don't know. Okay. Some other people have said, told me that it's the intake link. Okay. Okay. Go ahead, Mr. Sopo. I'm actually very happy to hear that you have an IT person. I mean, if you're juggling, and I, I know my heart goes out to you guys too. You've got to deal with humans, and then you have animals. And so 
that's an awful lot of an undertaking, and I wonder if that's another thing too. Once we can get a handle on things and wrap our heads around things, that again, it'll probably be a, a model or an organizational or whatever uh, to fix some of these Achilles heels. What I'm my wish list and what I'd like to see is I call it trackers. You can track things. Okay, how are we doing? And and especially now you have newer people, which is great because then you have energy rather than inertia with new people. New people bring ideas. They're like, hey, I, I don't need someone to tell me certain things if I have ideas to make things better. I do it because I want to. I don't feel like I have to be told to. So what I, I would I have a wish list of, hey, we're excited to report and like a six month tracker. We, we did this six months ago and look at all the progress we're doing and upload it onto the website. Let the citizenry say, be proud of the work that's being done and that's achievable when you have an IT person that can do that. And do aggregates, like this, like we could do little line graphs, which could, they're easy, you know, visual rather than all this text. People want to give it to me quick. They like to see pie charts, uh, you know, this is, this is where we were and this is where we are. Can we get things with IT to do yeah, that? Yeah, and I don't want to cut you off, but I want to stick with the agenda items and particularly oh, yeah. foster care. But no, well, he opened the door by asking for that and I appreciate that. But what I'd like to see, since that could take a ton of time going into conversations about wants and requests, mm -hmm. if you could put that in an email, copy the whole board on it, and okay. then that he can take that request For back IT. instead of discuss it here at the table, gotcha. which is not uh, productive okay. to, to, to just go into once, because we kind of already did that in the first six months. Mm -hmm. If we're revamping that and now we're kind of hitting punch lists, right. I think it'd be more productive to put it in an email. Is that very good? Is that, well, then can is that we okay? Just, I'm not trying not to cut people off, but I think it's... then to start getting things attached, because before <clears throat> meetings, we have prep. I well, like seeing things beforehand. So, so, so you know how um, you're in the group email, right? For yeah, our board. Sometimes I'm. Oh. I think it's been yeah. settled now, though. I think okay. you're on it from now on. Mm -hmm. um, so, if you put it on there, I'm hoping that Lieutenant Matthews will be able to get. Does she need a copy in the sheriff when she does things like this on our board? Copy okay. yeah, what on I, it. If I may. Yeah. Uh, what I would recommend, and, and it's an excellent idea. There's two things. Number one is questions or requests in between meeting times. Like we could walk out here right now and you say, golly, I, I should have asked for that or I should have done that. Go on and send an email. Okay. Uh, you can even, you can address it to Sheriff Craddock okay. uh, personally or you can address it to him as a copy and you, you can address it to Lieutenant Tarlacki or Captain McCoy okay. or myself. I, if I get that request, I'll get the information to him. Uh, but going. yeah, and all that will be how when how our um, email works is the first initial of the person, like mine would be J, and then my last name at sumnersheriff.com. At sumnersheriff.com. So if it's uh, Sheriff Craddock, uh, if, if, you look e. at Craddock. The, if you look at the last email that, that was the group There's one sent, uh, Eric Craddock is on there and you are on there. Yes. You could probably uh, pick up that one. Yeah. But so what I'd like you to do is do them in a punch list type thing, not a, not giant bullet paragraphs, points. No. bullet points, yep. and and then Busy ask people. me anybody ask me say is there a way we can work this into the agenda, okay. and next month and that way they'll know it's going to be coming up as a question, so hopefully they'll have an answer by that time. It's not just a hey I want to know something it's like I plan on discussing this please be prepared okay. for it it's, it's a formal and, request that's going to be on there and if I can sir just so everybody hears we are not discussing on email stuff we are just communicating items like is the meeting the agendas we're, we're saying this is the agenda sometimes the chairman will send us out and he'll say do you want to add anything to the agenda but we are uh, we have all been cautioned a lot by the legal department we don't have private discussions. No, We're bound by sunshine laws mm -hmm. on, but sunshine laws affect the way you vote. This is a non-voting typically committee. We just kind of discuss and make suggestions. So we're, to, we're really not in danger of breaking any sunshine laws, but we are supposed to do open meetings and be transparent with everything. The things that we would talk about in emails would be preparing for an agenda 
to present to the public on the types of things that we would like to see uh, seen. And it's, it's kind of the same thing that you guys would do to us if you wanted to email us and, and uh, give us some suggestions on, on something. So there is no sunshine laws being broken, and we're not in danger of that with this board in particular. But we do want to appear to be transparent with everything we do. So good point, Commissioner Boyd. Um, was there any other questions on particularly foster care application reviews? If not, I'm going to move on. Okay. Um, review of updated checklist provided by Team Shelter. If that is lengthy and it's going to go on for a long time, I would like to. I should have already asked to move that agenda. I guess we've got to keep it on there the way it is. Um, May I? I, may I? A suggestion? You want to yes, make a I have suggestion? a suggestion yeah. for you. Do you have some significant updates for us from the checklist without all the detail? Uh, just to basically everything's being checked off as we're going down through there. Like I said, all the uh, cats and all the portals uh, have been done. Uh, the new uh, areas for the dogs, uh, you got five. Uh, 20 feet by 30 feet. Uh, that's the big one, I think. That's the main thing is yeah. the play areas and yes, things like that. Sano that was said included that in was the needed. Uh, and that once the money was uh, approved, they got right on it and it's up. It's, it's, it's ready. Uh, they got them operational. Uh, which, you know, you're talking about a 20 by 30, that's 150 square, week, square feet per rung. So you got what? About okay. 750 square feet total, uh, something like that, that we didn't have before. Uh, we do have the two additional ones out back that was there previously. Uh, so we got seven different places right now. So the that playground will... is coming along? Yes. Or is it 100%? No, they said it's up and operational. Yeah, so if I could describe it from the picture. Do you have the picture I've got there? the pictures here. Just pass them around yeah, the Yeah, pass that around. You'll take a look at uh, the larger, uh, larger picture. I'll um, describe it to the public just so, and y'all can come up and look at the pictures after the meeting. But. Um, they look like they're like five foot tall, six foot, uh, six foot tall, uh, black uh, coated um, chain link fences, probably what, 20 by 30 or 30 by 30? Yeah, they're 20 feet foot wide, 30 feet play wide. Areas. Right now, they look like they have grass on them. I don't know how long that grass will last with dogs, but they look really nice with grass. <laughs> I hope that's something that you guys plan on trying to upkeep with grass or mulch or something. Cause I don't want to see mud holes in three months. Definitely not. But no hopefully they're they're yeah. Go ahead. Um, are there but any other? Like, so how many are there? Two or three? We've got five of those. Five. There. And then okay. we've got two additional mm -hmm. ones in the back that they have used before. But this just gives it more. And what the doctor? How many more additional? We got those five, and then okay. we've got two in back. So imagine like so five seven. pins, play pins for dogs that are twenty-five by twenty-five square foot next to each other to where. Fences are splitting them all apart, but multiple dogs that get along can go in there and play together and not be in their kennels all day, right? Correct. Yes, yeah, Could I just make one recommendation? Uh, that those animals are supervised when they're out They will. They are Because I do have a dog at my shelter that dug out. And dog, I mean, dogs do that. You know, mm -hmm. and he had been left outside. And, you know, make sure there's some type of shelter for the rain and the sun. And, you know, I mean, they're beautiful, you know, but... Again, the dog I had, Wilma, at the shelter, she ducked out. From Can you speak to that? Do you know what the policy is? Yeah, the, the, policy, the, the policy is an animal control person has to be out there at the time. We're talking one of the deputies or the animal control staff inside. Has to be out there with the animals when the animals are out there. We can have trustees and stuff also, but it will be supervised by, by an employee at all times. And just like I said, Diana, we have one beagle that climbed the six-foot fence. This was a right up, German Shepherd. Yeah, we had a beagle that signed the six-foot fence and went over. So that's one of the, the concerns, like I said, the reason you want somebody out there is to watch that. That's the major That's the major updated change. Is there any other major uh, changes this month? If, if I could just insert here, we're talking about what the uh, outside looks like. Um, I. I would like to entertain the idea of at this point and certain that I would like to have an invite for a tour for this committee to the facility. Oh yeah, the, the tent, Lieutenant Tarlac has already made that offer. Excellent. Uh, that if says we could at any schedule time, that. At any time, y'all want to come individually or as a group, you're welcome anytime. Just let him know uh, and you come in and he'll take you through the whole facility. Currently they close at 430. 
What are their, do they have any weekend hours or anything yes, like that? Yes, uh, they're open on Saturdays, uh, also till 4.30. Uh, so I could do a Saturday on But if you could, yeah, we don't well, need to discuss it. If you could, could, discuss, could, Sunday, arrange, it could be, it arrange it for us, mm -hmm. offline, arrange it. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what we can do. Yeah, you do tell us when it fits yeah. your schedule, and I'll just tell them they need to make it happen. I'll I'm going to throw a date out there on the email. And actually, place is at 4. 4, 4 30. We, we got people days. there till 4.30, though. Close Sunday and Monday. Yeah, okay. Sunday, Monday for the clean, deep clean day. So I will put out on email what what day I'm suggesting, and um, I'll copy in you and, and Lieutenant Tarlaki. But like I said, if you don't, if you want maybe yeah. one evening, you can't get there till six. Well, and they need to make arrangements. My opinion. If get you in there. Can I ask you for the citizens if they would like to come and see the facility, they can walk in as an adopter, and what parts of the facilities can they see? Can they go to the back and see My the yard, or what is that? They the have been showing everybody the all the adoption area before because of the uh, animals in the back. They're under quarantine and bite dogs and stuff. They hadn't, uh, but I'm sure if Chris is there, uh, or, or you've got a deputy there in person to go with to ensure nothing mm -hmm. happens. I don't see a problem with them turning off. So a citizen can go in any time it's open. I would, and I would ask, let me verify with Chris, and I'll do that right now. But my understanding is, like I said, in all the adoption areas, and then I'll see what they found out about the bag. Excellent. And I, the intake area, you said? Ma'am? And the intake? That's what, that's oh. what she was talking about, okay. the intake and the, the pre-holding area, uh, waiting for the dogs to vet them and stuff to get them over to okay. adoption. <laughs> I think that was one of the things that Dr. Pisano encouraged was the open place. There is no more section. Is that correct? That, that the people yes. cannot go into as long as somebody is available to take them right. back. Right. And they've done what Dr. Pisano said with another checklist on the kennels as far as the, the dog has two. Okay. We used to have all the individual kennels. Yeah. Now they're opening them up where the dog has two kennels. But of course, that cuts the amount of animals we can come in. But that's another change that was done and they made. Uh, the other changes was done were about the animal intake and owner surrenders and these other avenues. They've been wearing that out uh, quite a bit. I mean, all those are positive things that's been happening. All those uh, requests for that to be started has, has started and, and they're working through. Like I said, anything they could have done immediately, they've tried to go on and do that. And then the other stuff as far as the extra help and the programs and stuff like that comes as the budget and stuff well went forward. Okay. Um, and can I just say for yeah. the record that the budget was passed July 1st. So the, mo the money came, am I getting that wrong? August. I thought it was August. August 1st. Yeah, it was August 1st. August 1st. It was August 5th. Oh, that's right. We had delayed, months. didn't we? Yeah, if it, that's what's delayed some, not saying you, well, everybody had the, reasons. I mean, it's just something you'll have to work the late January, late July uh, uh, commission. So it was, the third it was the property July. assessor. I mean, everybody likes to hear that, but we didn't have the tax rate. Correct. And there's a situation with the school, so I had to get that work done. That was fine. <laughs> the it was schools a, it were was fine. Special, it was a special it, it was, call. It was the tax August, rate. We did not August. have the tax rate from the assessor's office, so therefore we could not make the budget number. We didn't right. know how much money would come in. So I know this is new, and everybody's eager to jump. We're, we're sitting at... You know, yeah. a month or less from the time they got the money. We gotta get them time to fill the positions, but I, I, I wanna see that that is like right on the horizon. If we could hear that, then I think a lot of people would be happy that big changes are coming. Um, with that being said, uh, is that the major ones for the, re because the next time is, it's gonna take longer. And I really wanna get to number eight on new business. Does anybody have anything have else one. on review about the checklist? I have one Go thing. ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, regarding the washer and dryer, what is the deal with that? We're getting the washer and dryers, uh, my understanding is, what we've been using before, they say was commercial grade, but they're not commercial grade. Now they're paying big bucks uh, for the ones like are in the jail. Uh, they're finally getting those over there. so. I think it's that was neat. on Sheriff Craddock's request. It was on the per and it's something I requested way back when when I was over there. Part of the total of $200,000 that we increased our budget by was 
was for wash and dry. Yeah, industrial. Yeah, Twenty thousand dollars. Can we have your old ones? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah. Have your I need to go somewhere. Make the old ones. But they're not. Some of them are good shape. Just one or two of them. They, they wore out. <laughs> right. They'll talk off afterwards. Maybe we can hook you up. There, there are procedures. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's true. I want to That's true. If we could go on to the next item. Okay. Um, we're gonna go to new business. So this one A and B are kind of are kind of going to merge just because mm -hmm. of the nature of what they are. Um, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna start this. This this whole conversation is kind of ebbing and flowing with frustration and niceties, but um, it's gonna be another it's gonna be another point of frustration. Um, but we're working through this. Everybody's understanding where we are and we're gonna work through this. So um, I was discouraged that my email wasn't answered quicker because to me everything that we do on this committee revolves around the relationship with our community partners one of the bigger biggest ones is Sumner Spay and Neuter Alliance and Dr. Sarah She's not a or not a doctor sorry Sarah um, Sorry. She has she people that work for her. I assume she actually did it, but people work for her. I haven't seen the. the I'll tell you. No, I've, I've met her and I've talked to her. I just never seen the operation. Like um, so, and I get Dr. Sarah Pizano mixed up with her too. So sorry about that. Um, but anyway, the relationship with them, I figured was low hanging fruit, because she's right here. I mean, really, really close, and the success of that program is the linchpin for the 100% vaccination, the 100% spay and neuter. Everything was, was key uh, on that, keying on that relationship. And it's frustrating because if there's an issue with you guys at the Sheriff's Department, with her, I want to know what it is because I want to help, try to help fix it because Usually, people and personalities are, are the problem, you know, with the relationships. It's not usually rules or anything else. Um, I, I reached out to them and asked them um, what the issue was, and they said it's, there's no difference than, than the letter that we sent, I think it was four years, mm -hmm. three years ago. And they just have some some criteria that they want followed, so it is kind of rules, but it's not asking a lot from what I see and what I experience um, in my own um, learning, just by having my own pet spade. Um, it's not a lot that they're asking for, so I want to know more about what the problem is. But I want to give I know there's some people here that have some information that I don't have. Um, to explain a little more about that. And I, I, I invited um, Sarah to come give her side of, as to why this relationship isn't mended yet. But taking animals to Kentucky to do the same job as taking them up the street seems like that is the crux of a lot of the problem. And if we can only get that mended, I thought the answer would be to have a contract to where we as a commission cannot legally hold somebody responsible or you know to the contract but have some sort of oversight to explain and help out with the relationship it seems like the sheriff's department doesn't want a contract and sarah doesn't want a contract and neither one of them want a contract i don't understand that because you can make a contract whatever you want it to be as loose or as tight as you want it to be but to me that gives a third party or even a citizen group to know what each side is expected to do. And I think that's a big part of the problem. And I just want to hash that out and see what that is. Were you in the queue yet? Or she's, you're, you're second. But um, I know, that, like I said, I'm going I'm to give the floor over to some people that know more about this than me and let you guys speak. Sarah couldn't be here tonight, but um, she did convey that there is some frustration there and we need to get it solved. So 
Go ahead, Ms. Townsend. Okay, so I talked with Sarah right before this meeting. I even wrote it down so I would get it right. Um, part of Sarah's problem is, and this letter was four years ago, you're correct, in November be four years. She feels that nothing really has changed, and, and I honestly feel the same way. But two weeks ago, she met with Captain McCoy, and he knew nothing about this letter and or any of the issues but yet he you know he came on in and so she she told him she said please read the letter and we'll revisit this conversation well he has never contacted her again and she ha she hasn't received any response and several months ago she met with lieutenant tarlacky and to talk about resuming the surgeries and she made him four appointments and they cancel them due to short staff. You cannot tell me that there's two women in the front, somebody can't put a dog in their car, drive it over, volunteer, David, he transports for me all the time. He don't even have to come in the building, stick the dog in his car, let him drive it to spay neuter. Well, I got those four appointments because again, they have, they have such demand, she doesn't wanna lose any spots and I, you know, I'll take them. And that's how I work with them. I do what they ask. And, and again, if you've got the time to go to nine different schools, to, to read books to children. And again, that's a, a great, um, but why are you doing that as animal control? Why aren't you teaching humane education and, and focusing on what your job is? I mean, that's a lot of time to go to these schools and you've got animals sitting in your shelter. And so, so anyway, she, she uh, the, the, the simple things, like you said, the simple things that she wanted to address was, one, be on time. She said that they were always late for their points, and be on time to pick up. Sometimes they were two hours late, she said. And again, those first set of animals that stayed the night, they've got to get out and those kennels clean so that the next set can come in. So they're sitting here with, with animal controls and animals. Don't bring animals with upper respiratory, diarrhea, dehydrated, uh, and she requires a copy of the intake with vaccines, uh, microchip information, the dog's stomach shape, weight, and this were given to me. I'll pass them around. These are just an example. The stomach shape. The what? The stomach shape. Explain oh, about that. If to look for a spay scar, uh, to see, you know, and again, sometimes uh, spay neuter, they'll do a little green tattoo, but not everybody does, and sometimes it's hard to see a little scar, but at least, you know, <coughs> look. And, but these are, uh, have been given to me. These are uh, recent intake kennel cards from Animal Control on blue and cupcake. There's no weight. There's no, uh, this weight was written down when they found out it was coming to spay neuter. So I just don't, I just don't believe that, that the, the proper protocol for intake is happening. I don't see heartworm tests, I don't see weights, I don't see vaccines, I don't see deworming, I don't see flea treatment. And so the Humane Society gets a dog. As a nonprofit, they incur the cost that the animal control, they, they put it on something else. That dog laid there for three days. If you look, every month we get reports on, on uh, animals that were brought in by the Sheriff's Department, by Galton, by Portland how many were euthanized, adopted, returned to owner, and deceased. Every month there's animals that just deceased for no reason. Well, if Heather hadn't got that dog, it would have been another a deceased on here. How do you let animals lay there and die? I mean, I, I don't, I just, that's what I just don't understand. And that is her frustration. And it's, and again, as Sarah said, it's not due to no appointments, it's due that they did not respond to the letter. And as far as the certificate that she said, there was a, a certificate that was printed, right, Joe? Uh, about four, just for uh, them, like you could only use spay neuter uh, to use the certificate once you adopted a dog. Oh, yes, ma'am. Yeah, yes, and, ma and she said she doesn't have a problem with that certificate, but it has to include other places. She cannot be your primary. primary. So she's willing to work with people and again i mean i'll just for those who don't know i won't read this whole letter but it just was addressed to the sumner county sheriff's office and control division it's really hard to read november 9 2020 almost four years ago 
We are extremely concerned about the poor health and lack of medical care the dogs and cats in your facility receive. The Sumner County Spay Neuter Alliance has worked closely with, closely with Sumner County Animal Control for 10 years providing spay neuter services and basic services for pets being put up for adoption. We'd like to continue providing spay neuter surgeries, but at this time, until changes are made, we can no longer accept animals into our clinic from your shelter. We cannot continue to take the chance of passing along sickness to our other patients. We cannot perform surgeries on unhealthy dogs and cats, and we will not continue causing stress to our staff and veterinarians over the condition of the animals in your care. Changes must be made with guidance from professionals who professionals from the animal care control field. A qualified professional must be hired to implement services and, and make changes. Uh, illness is due to uh, cross-contamination. Uh, we should not be asked to perform surgeries on dogs and cats that are dehydrated, emaciated, have respiratory infections, parasites, diarrhea, and other issues that should be addressed <coughs> at intake and during their stay by your medical staff. Dogs and cats health should not deteriorate and they should not suffer at your facility whose job it is to care for them. There must be a plan for injured and sick animals that enter your facility. Allowing them to linger in pain should not be allowed. And... Uh, you still going? No, keep going. No, keep going. I, I just want to, when you finish the letter, I want to say something. Go ahead. Until we can have a meeting and discuss the situation and solution, we cannot provide Sumner County Animal Control Services. Qualified, knowledgeable personnel must be hired. Protocol must be played in place to better care for animals that you house at Sumner County Animal Control. Um, and if you want to read the rest of it, yeah, okay. it's just um, Intake approach would prevent many dogs and cats from entering the shelter and decreasing overcrowding. An update and consistent uh, protocol, intake protocol that includes basic preventative care Vaccines, dewormer, examinations, documenting weight should be done in-house. Most surrounding animal control programs do this and much more. There are many professional organizations that routinely, routinely offer help putting better policies in place. And there is and has been a serious contagious respiratory virus illness in cats at the Sumner County Animal Control Shelter. Most of these cats are not healthy enough to undergo sterilization surgery due to nasal discharge, ocular discharge, fever, dehydration, and congested lungs. Cats not yet ill have, who have been exposed will most likely develop symptoms after the stress of surgery. Surgery should only be performed on healthy patients. Sick animals brought in for surgery not only puts other animals at risk, but stress on our staff. Recently, we have treated very sick cats that have been adopted from Sumner County Animal Control and several other surgical patients that have become sick after being exposed. Our first responsibility has to be to our patient's health and we cannot risk infecting them with a virus that can be fatal. Every cat that enters your facility at this time will be exposed to illness. We suggest that you temporarily stop intake of cats and kittens and, until you get the situation under control. Um, Please understand, we want to continue our partnership and we want dogs and cats to be adopted. Sarah has no vendetta. Sarah mm -hmm. wants to work with people, but you cannot just, I mean, you've got to step up and, and do, you know, but again, and, and she told me to make sure everybody knew that too, but improvements to intake protocol, housing, medical protocol, knowledgeable staff, stress reduction and cleaning procedures in order to have a good outcome for dogs and cats in your care. This is long past due. So again, she, all she's asking for is this simple, again, weight, vaccine, history, and come with the kennel cards. If you can look in those cards, I mean, I don't know how you can say that it's that they're doing it. I'm gonna I take wanna, the cards back to them. I wanna, I wanna. Um, and, and let me say this real, real so, quick too. I wanna I, let you continue, but I just wanna say something real quick about the letter. So that letter was written four years ago lots of changes were made because of that letter but there's clearly still an issue with the relationship there's still a disconnect and that's what i wanted to get to the heart of lots of things were, were lots of money was spent to try to correct some of these actions 
uh, some of these uh, problems um, with disease spread and things like that, like ventilation systems, things like that, a lot of issues were changed because of this letter. It's not that I don't care, but I want to look where are we today and why is there still a disconnect? She has laid out exactly what she wants when appointments come. And I feel like the sheriff's office or animal control should be treated just like any other citizen where she's the boss. She is a great asset to this county and whatever she says needs to happen because it costs us more to go elsewhere. It just does. I don't care if the rates are the same in Kentucky, you got gas, you got time away from the facility, which means another person needs to be there to take their place. So that relationship, we got to figure it out. And I'm gonna let you continue because I know I interrupted you and I know you're next in the queue, but I just want to say that so that the full weight of that letter wasn't just dropping tonight on the Sheriff's Department. They've done a lot of stuff to correct a lot of those issues. But please continue. And I'll, be, I'll just be real quick. Again, Sarah just wanted me to, to let everybody know. I mean, she works with everyone and she's not, you know, she's not trying to make it more difficult on the Sheriff's Department. And it, even, you know, again, this is not an attack on the Sheriff's Department. This is your job. And, and we're requesting that you do what is proper protocol. And I mean, the, the, all these great things are done and all this air filter and all this, but the most basic thing is not being done and that's your biggest problem. They're not vaccinating. They're not they checking for parasites. I mean, these animals come in emaciated. I mean, I, I took an emaciated dog today. In two weeks, you won't recognize that dog. Mm -hmm. If it was at the animal control, it still it'd look even worse. I mean, because I just don't know. And again, they're all good people. They're kind people. I mean, I, I've tried to help them with stuff, and they've been kind to, to us. I mean, we all want a working relationship. But do your job. Just it's that simple. Vaccinate these animals on intake. That's where all your disease is coming. Mm -hmm. and, and and again, Sarah, all she wants, Captain. McCoy to do is read this so he knows the issues and and then let him address it and then she she said I wrote it down don't forget she said and then we'll revisit all he has to do is call her and say hey we'll make sure this gets done and she'll she'll start scheduling surgeries but you got to show up and you got to be on time mm -hmm. I mean I gotta do the same thing if I'm late you know <laughs> Yeah, there's other factors. A lot of misinformation's been spoken, and I'll just tell you that, and other factors in reference to that. And I'll hold that because I've got information right here that will address some of that stuff until Miss Donna ha uh, gets through with, with her comment or question. Okay, go ahead. Something. Okay, so I'm finally, like, I look at, in science, we look at patterns. One, two, three. It's, it's you either have a trend, it's either statistically significant, and, and, and I'm going to have to just, because a problem solution, it's always problem solution. What I'm hearing, and, and it's very upsetting because if relationships collapse for a few reasons, and you can have agreements, you could have, this is, again, protocol expectation was passed on. If the protocol expectation is not adhered to, then that fractures a relationship. It's very basic baseline. If somebody is not showing the care to be there on time and is two hours late, doesn't schedule, then there's a lack of care. And that does not allow people to start off on the good foot because it's, there's something called a lack of respect. And it's just, this is just what it is. It's human insight mining 101. If you ask for something and you're waiting a month or there's a month and there's no response, no response, there's nothing that annoys me more than to have, like, you know, as an HOA president, a property manager that's not responsive. Being not responsive jeopardizes relationships. So there are definitely people who, I mean, I look at this dog and my heart breaks because I can see the dog is suffering, even the way his body's positioned, because we're not seeing the animal. We're not, we're just looking at papers, but this is the animal. Who is, who was doing this? Why wasn't the work done? If the work is not, not routinely done, that that individual does not to be in that position. It happens in every job, every company, should also be happening and applicable, more importantly, in 
the public sector because we are all financially supporting what we believe in our hearts is being done. So what I'm hearing and what I'm seeing and I'm hearing tonight is a trend. And it may again circle back to what is the structure, who's on first, are they capable and qualified? We may not have the right people in the right positions to do something called efficiency, effectiveness, and outcomes. And this is again what we're seeing and I'm hearing, and look, Sarah's got her a reputation. She has an incredible company and that is reflective on her ability to implement protocol and if people don't do that, then I'm sorry we can't accommodate and she has every right to do that because I would be in the same fashion, you know, having my own company too. You have got to adhere to protocol. If people can't do the job, then you just need to have the right people doing the job. And again, I think that's, that should be a red flag and that should be examined because now you have, you have to have record keeping of who's touch, touching this and that and is this individual the one doing it and is that a trend? Well then, that person probably does not need to be in that position. And people could be nice, they can be great people, but that doesn't matter in the scheme of things. What matters is, are you qualified? Are you capable? Are you in the right position to do so? Are you not taking care of some basic things? Because you will not have a relationship. It's not just people and personalities. It's failure to do proper protocol that has been, if a, if a letter's three years old or four years old, and you're still on the same problems, well, there is a problem. And that should, that should immediately be addressed and immediately examined and, and um, and even if the right if the right individual who's supposed to be overseeing everything doesn't have the knowledge and that person shouldn't be in that position and if they can't even do some basic things either they're not even scheduling because again the root root is going to be spay and neuter and vaccines and taking care of these animals health it's the care of the animals should be paramount and if that's not happening then then we have definitively to have to address that and it's going to circle back to protocol people or chart who does what are they capable and you'll be able to fix a lot of these problems because I'm hearing them and it's, it's upsetting to me. Thank you. Were you in front of him or was he in front of you? No, no, no she'd go right here. No, she'd okay. go right here. My question, you know, so we have an issue with Sarah's, uh, the animals going to Sarah's that are ill and they're not being taken, they're not following the protocol of what her she has requested. So I'm like, well, what are they doing in Franklin, Kentucky? Are they taking these dogs that are sick and cats that are sick and just automatically taking care of sick animals and neutering them and all that? I don't know. I, I mean, <coughs> it bothers me that on one hand, you're going to Kentucky with animals and having that done, but she's saying that a lot of the animals are coming over and they're ill. So what the hell is going on? Because I, I don't get it. I, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to put a puzzle together here because as a, I practice on humans. And I know that if there's an issue with a practice, you know, <coughs> what I'm doing is that direct effect on it, someone else. So why is this picture different in Kentucky than it is in Gallatin. So that's my question is, is there, what, 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 what's the story here? Because it sounds like she's trying to help out, but she's not getting relief from the people that need can, to come. Can I help you with your puzzle? Yes ma'am. So four years ago, this was the story, <coughs> but as of now, we're not having any animals going over there. So there is no story about the health of our animals today other than what Heather presented to us, and we know what the health is, but the spay and neuter clinic doesn't know because they're not getting the animals. Yeah, they are. Are they they're getting, still getting animals? Mm -hmm. No, they're not leaving. From the, they're leaving unfixed, and that, like she had. Oh, they're getting them from the adopters. She had a, a husky that came in today that had been uh, adopted seven months ago from Animal Control, and is just now getting fixed. Or, um, you know, the other thing, when a lot of these animals got sick, uh, even uh, clients, Animal Control would send them back to Sarah so that she could vet them and give them After. medicine. Oh. 
and and then the other clients, not animal for the regular clients, their animals were sick, so she'd have to treat them also. Oh, I don't know if you get back in the queue. To I'm sorry. Statement, I'm I, sorry. I, I, no, that's okay. Just Thank you for the clarification. Oh, I don't the queue, and I want him sorry. to have the opportunity to address some of these things, and then if you want to rebut some of them. No, I just, I'm, I'm just going to say what the facts are. Uh, in reference to Blue, Blue was brought in by Hendersonville Animal Control. Uh, Blue was at the shelter for two days. At the time it was come in, uh, the lady had told Hendersonville Animal Control that the dog was uh, vicious or whatever and bitter, whatever the case may be. It didn't turn out to be that way. So Hendersonville Animal Control is probably going to be charging the owner with false reporting on that. Uh, in reference to the dog, uh, this is the one Lieutenant Tarlake says, which is blue, uh, does that dog not have cancer? I believe is what, what uh, uh, Lieutenant Tarlake says here. Uh, said the dog wasn't acting exactly right when it was coming in. Uh, it's supposed to be aggressive and it was acting a little odd, uh, but it said it turned out it was filled with cancer. It was the owner surrender and the owner didn't disclose any of the information to Hendersonville or uh, and the Hendersonville officer uh, never gave the information as far as that. Reference that part of that part. I'm just going by what I'm told. Uh, I've asked him and uh, they said, yes, yeah, she knew very well about the dog we advised her. Oh, and they thought maybe it might be having a seizure, might have had a seizure or something. I uh, did not know. Um, oh, this was probably to change the owner. They're going to charge the owner, uh, not us, but Hendersonville. Uh, reference to the appointments that was canceled, there was no appointment set with Sarah. Sarah called in. Sarah called in in the morning and had four appointments available. Uh, calling in at seven or whatever in the morning with four appointments when uh, nothing was prior. No, you're not going to have the staff that can jump up and grab the animals and take them right over. It's not enough time. Uh, so, so that's the only thing that Lieutenant Tarlick said he was aware of uh, was that uh, she had four cancellations or she could do four appointments. She called that day and couldn't be done. Well, number one, some of the dogs already been fed. The animals been fed. You don't feed, you don't you not don't feed the dogs before you take them over for surgery, or cats either one. Uh, so that was one of the situations. But that was the only time when you said we don't have the personnel to do it, according to Lieutenant Tarlacky. Uh, in reference to that letter, that letter was four years ago. Uh, that letter was a direct result because I was over there running animal control of Sarah being pissed off, and I say that word like it is, because her, two of her uh, techs volunteered to come over and help at the shelter. They came over to help the shelter. I had 135 cats in that shelter and intake. It was only designed for, for 38, and I hunt, okay? And, but we was under the uh, protocol then that we could not refuse an animal. Can't refuse the animal. Uh, Sheriff, bless his soul, Weatherford, uh, at the time that I was over there, said if a citizen of Sumner County brings animal to animal control, then we're to take it, regardless. I was taken. That's the reason I had 135 cats up there. That's the reason I had all kinds of overflow on the dogs and stuff. But I'm just saying that. But that's what made Sarah out because they came over, we had these cats that was just brought in. Uh, kittens and one had an eye messed up another had a place with his face and stuff like that they came over there and they was assisting and stuff and they got upset about those animals and they ran back over to Sarah's, Sarah's place of employment where they were and was crying and was all upset that's what triggered that letter right there no mm -hmm. yes yes ma'am 100 percent let him have the floor I've got the floor that's first hand sorry, information I apologize okay I not and I get very passionate about it because I busted my butt over there for five and a half years. I took $10,000 of my own money that I got paid and put into that place, okay? So I cared and I busted my butt. And I went to Sarah and, and met with Sarah numerous times. What can we do to improve? The staffing that was over there because they wasn't doing their job at the time? Guess what? Every one of the girls that's in the front office got gone. You know why? Because I did the documentation and had them fired. That's the facts. Living color. I was there. I lived it day in, day out. It's the hardest job caring for the animals that you've ever seen for in your life. 
because of some of the protocols that we were under at that particular time. Things have changed all kinds of stuff. The, the shelter is getting things that I asked for four or five years ago, okay? They're getting those things now. They got the, when I was there, they put a filtration system in, in the cat area to try to help with the, uh, the disease, the respiratory disease. Now they got a whole $20,000, $35,000 system over there that cleans there and does all that. Uh, the protocol on cleaning kennels, uh, like I said, they were cleaned all the time. Now I've been told that you just want to spot clean the cat kennels. Unless it's really dirty, you know, just in there spot clean them. We was tearing everything down when I was there. I took every cage we had out, the kennels out, scrubbed the walls from top to bottom, had two different types of disinfectant that was using on the walls and stuff. We cleaned everything up, pressure washing everything outside, got it all disinfected and brought it back in. We had to disinfect. It took hours to do that, but that's what we done. Well, that's what I tried to do. You did a good job. And, and, and like I said, busted a can to, to try to do what was right. Got rid of some staff that was not checking the cats like they're supposed to. After the third time, and Sarah called me up and said, well, this cat, it, it's got a wheeze. I said, what do you mean it's got a wheeze? It's got a wheeze in his chest. I went directly to that person. I said, did you not listen? Because we have the thesoscopes, it's real easy. Let's listen to the cat. No, I didn't do it. No, I didn't do it. Well, that's the last thing that person did at the sheriff's office. Because, because like I said, it's the care of the animals. So uh, we had an, uh, a dog that was underweight uh, that went over to Sarah's. Uh, and she said, whoa, this dog is way too underweight. We had somebody who wanted to adopt the dog. So we took it over there for protocol. It was thin weight, but she said, no, it's too emaciated. It, it doesn't weigh, weigh enough. We can't do that, okay? So we make a rearrangement. We had an animal that had no signs whatsoever of anything wrong with it. Their vet looked at it when we brought it over. It's an old hound dog, sweet thing. It, it, it looked fine. Got it on the operating table and boom, blood everywhere. Guess what? Parvo. No signs prior to. <clears throat> Their vet looked at it and come in, no signs. But on, when it was put on anesthesiology, it, it, it did that and it was Parvo. Oh my gosh. But Parvo's bad. Very contagious disease. Very contagious disease. Now Sarah had an operating table there that all this blood and it turned out that the dog had parvo. Boost to baby, right? There's no sign, there's no prior signs. Uh, so there, they are, just because somebody sits down from their perspective and writes something or somebody is viewing something from their perspective, that's not all the story. That may be some of the story, but that's not all the story. And I tell you that the guys and girls over in animal control, I just, if I may just take a minute, Mr. Chairman, they are trained, they go, they go to schooling, they have to pass, they get tested on this stuff, all their knowledge. They got all these books. When I was over there, Sarah wanted me to go to these conferences and stuff. I went to the conferences, I tried to do everything, but again, we were limited on what we could do at that particular time by policies or by what, what needed to be done. Uh, and that young lady right there, uh, we talked to many a time. Uh, things that we wanted to do but couldn't at the time because uh, it just wouldn't wouldn't happen. Now all these a bunch of changes have been made. This is the most changes that I've ever seen at the sheriff's office as a whole in a division since I've been there six and a half years reference animal control. Primarily because of Dr. Brasado and getting that consultant in and saying this 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 this. Some of the things that Dr. Brasano had said, Sarah had said. This young lady over here, Diana, has said on some of them uh, before, done little things, but no, we're vaccinating. Every animal comes in that door and gets vaccinated. So you are 100% percent right now? 100%. That's from, that came from uh, uh, Tarlac, because uh, I specifically asked him that That's last a big week. milestone. Well, I every animal that comes through that door that? is vaccinated. Who does the vaccination? In reference to the uh, intake not uh, working or the thing on the website. Uh, so they're not, they're not filling it out, but they're saying they are vaccinated. Right, right. This, I don't know. I've got to ask him specifically about this, okay? And I'll get an answer and have it. Sure. Well, I'll have the answer to you before next meeting because we're going to send the emails. Yeah. But, uh, but, uh, <laughs> uh, but, yeah, everything's supposed to be on there. Everything's supposed to be on there. So if it's not, we need to find out why, right? 
and just like tonight. Why would this particular animal, why? Uh, if it's been there for two days and it was brought in by another agency on owner surrender and it bit, well, yes, yeah, under quarantine or at that time, we got to keep the animal for 10 days uh, before we can do something with it. But if it's showing some other signs of, of something's wrong with it, then we, somebody needs to come look at it. Okay. Somebody needs to come look at that animal, okay? Um, but anyway, but that's just, uh, no matter, let's say blue was an owner surrender, we told that, we told that, told that. The animals, they didn't have all the information from there. Yeah, well that, that's just some of it right now. But, but again, uh, I love Miss Sarah. I'll say that on record, I love Miss Sarah. Uh, does a fantastic job. Uh, but looking back in history, it's history. A lot of things have been changed and done since then. Uh, compared to what it was when Mike McLaren took over to where we are today, night and day. Night and day. Do we still got a long way to go? Of course. Yeah, because some of these changes, other things that's taking place, it'll be in sections as we go along. It can't be done overnight. And there, there's nobody right now today that can walk into that, set, in, into that shelter right now and fix whatever they think is wrong in a month or two months. You know why? Because of the volume of animals and for the and for the volume of citizens and stuff come in. This young lady Donna asked about the euthanasians, and I had uh, got that yesterday, uh, email, and I'll be sure I got it. All right, and uh, I even put together. Chris sent me this, which I got a copy for everything, but I took it a step further and make it a little bit more legible altogether. Right? He had it broke down. Looks good, but. Uh, but since last September, when we started uh, this meeting, we've taken 1,048 animals in to the shelter. Okay. And that's from September 23rd of 2023 until as of 9, 10 of 2024 at 10 a.m. 1,048 animals has entered the shelter. 180 dogs, 162 cats, and one raccoon, and because the raccoon had to be euthanized. Uh, euthanizations. We had a total of 343 euthanizations out of that 1,048. Now you look at that, and I know we had a number earlier that was said 50 to 70 percent. That's 32.66 percent euthanasia rate. Okay, we're not at 50 and 60 and 70 anymore. And if you take a look, and I did supply to the to this body uh, before from 2010 until 2022, each year you've shown the euthanizations have dropped, have dropped, have dropped. The reason for that is for the work of the people over there. For Miss Sarah, when she was with us up to 2018, her ability to turn the animals and get them fixed and neutered helps in that total. Also, because you got less animals coming into shelter, so you got less animals that have to be euthanized instead because the numbers are down. When we first took over the animal control way back in 2008, 2009, 4,400 animals was coming into the shelter a year. And they was in that facility over there behind Public Works in a trailer and had a brick old block place out back with no air conditioning, no heat or anything else. 4,400 animals. So we're now, I averaged about 25 when I was there. And, uh, and so with this, you know, we're down to 1,048. Of course, we've had COVID and we had a bunch of other stuff, you know, come through that, that, that will affect the totals. But, but this is from 23 to 24. We're, ha we're not all the way through September, so those numbers will go up slightly. Because, uh, again, this is just till 9, 10. Uh, but that, that's where it is. And I promise you there's not one employee and the sheriff included that don't want things to be exactly the way they're supposed to be. Thank you, Mr. Matthews. I'll give my own cue and you're, you're next. I don't. Um, so, and, and I may touch on some of the things that you're going to say. So, um, I, I just I'm trying have to, to say, I have to down. leave at 7.30. No, I understand. And, and okay. I need to too soon. Okay. But we're going to try <laughs> to draw this to a close. But um, I appreciate your perspective. There's two sides to every story. Um, Clearly, that was a long time ago, and a lot of things have been changed. And there's, there's, like I said, there's two sides of every story. Um, with that being said, Sarah's not coming knocking 
on our door saying I need I need business. I'm gonna go out of business if if I oh, no. don't get some business. <laughs> she doesn't need Sumner County. She doesn't need us. But we clearly need her. I I see there's a disconnect. You so you told me y'all side of the story. She said her side of the story. What do we need to do to fix it? Because do we need a third party mediator? Because you've said your piece, which sounds very reasonable, and I don't know why she didn't get it. She says her piece, and it sounds very reasonable. I don't know why you guys don't get it. There's got to be something to work out between you guys, because Kentucky is not an option. That is an emergency option. That is not the standard. We can't do that. You're correct. Because that's the key to getting all this done right. Very encouraged to hear it during that um, that there's 100% 100% vaccination now because that that is another milestone that we we should have mentioned earlier with big gains. That is one of two of the major ones. The 100% spay and neuter and 100% vax was two huge ones. Um, but I would like another request, please, to take to Sheriff Craddock and to um, Captain McCoy is to reach out to, to her this week, get something on the books, a date, and if Sheriff Craddock or if you're more knowledgeable about it or whoever's the most knowledgeable about, knowledgeable about it understands whether it's a personality thing or whatever, what the issue is, and y'all need help with a third party mediator, let us know. Because I'm sure there's members here or there's members closer to, to Sarah, friends of hers or whatever, that would mediate and try to figure out where this impasse is. Because going on, what you said, six years now since she's been a solid partner, 18 was when it yes. was solid but it's kind of been sparse between there with little startups and drop-offs that's not acceptable um but see, there, there's got to be a clear thing mr chairman if i could i think that i think we're about this far away of getting a resolution well i really what, do from what she said to what mm -hmm. captain mccoy said seemed like two totally opposite statements made as the reasons why they haven't had that meeting yet. If there's some back channel things going on that aren't official yet, that's encouraging to know if that's really happening. But if if you guys could give us a status of that also this week and then reach out to where, if we need to get involved, like I said, one of us needs to sit down with you guys. I'm sure there's willing people and maybe we can have that meeting take place between now and next month's meeting and next month can be a statement of um celebration that, okay. that the relationships well i'll home. tell you right now what i will do <clears throat> personally and i don't have a dog in the hunt other than i'm representing the sheriff's office and I'm controls not under my preview anymore but i will personally go sure. over this week and see if i can meet with sarah and see if we can't get something burned out well I, I, mccoy captain mccoy needs to be he will. involved he in will. some but way I, because he's gonna have to maintain it right but i gotta i just want to talk to her and, and she tell me what she needs, and then we'll get the meeting set. Okay. And we'll see if we can't get what needs to be done. Captain now. McCoy, That's Lieutenant Tarnike, Sheriff Craddock, and, and you. That's triangulation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He was already reaching out to her. He, she's supposed to be reaching out to him. Then you put another one, and that's a triangle. Mm -hmm. You'll never get anywhere. You'll just yeah. be dinging them like this. Well, I'm just talking about going over and talking. He's going to set the meeting time. I'm just going over there to talk to her. And, and if you carry it back to Lieutenant, um, if you carry it back to Captain um, McCoy, I would just like to know that it's on the books. Yeah, my understanding. Because I want straight to from follow. Captain McCoy, he was just waiting on the date for them to read. And she's waiting on him to read the letter and him yeah, to reach yeah. out and say, "I read the letter." And he has read the letter. He so why hasn't he has reached back out yet? Yeah, that's well. That's the thing. My understanding from him. He reached out and wanted to do it. I was waiting on her to call back. If you could clarify that, I sort of wonder. And go back to, to your people and just email us in in the update where that meeting is going to happen at, and if we can participate or get involved in some way, we want to help. And I want to reach out also and say to the citizens: if you know something's going on, 
right? You have information and you don't believe it's right, please send something to the sheriff's office. If you hear that Blue or Spanky was adopted or obtained from the sheriff's office and it had a broke leg or it had something like that and it didn't appear to have vet care, didn't appear to have vet care, send that to the sheriff's office. Because Craig uh, Traddock said he will make sure every complaint or every situation like that gets investigated. Okay, thank you. I know you're in the queue. Go ahead. I'll be real quick. I know everybody wants to go home. Um, I'll tell this, Joe. When you were there, it was the cleanest that it's ever mm -hmm. been. But why did you break out with Parker? Because when you and I had talked, the sheriff would not give you money for vaccines. Vaccines is the whole core. Let me finish. Exactly. I, Again, I couldn't, part get, to, of, part I couldn't of, get the shots. You're correct. Correct. Yes, it was super clean. It doesn't matter how clean if you don't vaccinate. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. So again, I don't know how you're saying you're vaccinating 100 percent when these two animals weren't. Or, and, and again, that's one of the things that Sarah wants. And let me let me just make it real clear. Sarah's tired of talking, and she, she, mm -hmm. she was very clear. Captain McCoy was supposed to call her back. So if he would call her, you don't need to even go talk to her. If he would just call her and say, hey, when can we meet? So they can discuss this letter. If he needs a copy of it, I can get you a copy. Uh, so they can discuss the letter and what needs to be done. And it's so simple. She just wants healthy animals to come, vaccinated, wait. And, and, and again, things like that can happen. Part of it, that can happen, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, but. But again, somebody needs to reach out to her. And, and if you think, you know, it's, it's that much of an issue, then just don't use her. I mean, just try to abide by the simple things she's asked. And that's, that's it. This could be a policy issue that they're not filling this out, even though they are 100% vaccinated. Please yeah. just find out about this. We need to find out. And I don't care if you go see uh, Sarah or if you tell Captain McCoy to follow through with making the appointment. Just please uh, inform us of that that's happening this week or whatever. Even if he, he contacts her and says the meeting's on for next week, just I want him to I'll, at least I'll contact her this week. I'll send an email out. Okay. And, and I appreciate you know. that. Yeah, we'll take care can of that. Sure okay. Yeah, can we have an, an either or? Tarlock. Please extend the invite I will to, extend it again. to <laughs> Lieutenant Tarnacki, Captain, Captain McCoy, and or Sheriff Craft. Yeah, present. I mean, this in, is all any, about them. Any of them are welcome to come to this. And hopefully it'll be a, a more uh, time of celebration that we've gotten even more things accomplished at that yes, meeting. So the, that would be great. I think all the feral cages that we used to have, they're gone, right? They're stainless steel ones. That they're gone. They're not even in the building anymore. It's a recommendation of, of uh, Dr. Johnson. So they've, there's a lot of things that are doing good. And what we'll do, we'll try to take that sheet, that checkoff sheet, and check off down through there. Just show this is done, this is done, this is done. This has not been done. And maybe why. Okay. Yeah, How about that? Okay. okay. And, uh, so last last thing I'm going to say is the next meeting for this will be October 8th. That's the second Tuesday of the month. Uh, same time, 5:30, um, right here. And so I'd encourage people to stay uh, stay aware. Did you have something to say at the end? Let's, let's keep you at the end. I'm not going to. I'm not going to close that. Go ahead. Just one one quick thing. Okay. If it's In reference to. Still they said an animal closing. escaped from animal control. That animal escaped from the officer, not some county, Gallatin officer, who had that uh, responsibility, and it escaped to him at animal on his, control. On his way to right. It's, well, it came to it came to the shelter, <laughs> and as he was touch with anybody. as he was doing that, it it escaped. So but, I can't tell you that's on Gallatin, 100. But how do you get in touch with somebody at the sheriff's department? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. How would you get in touch with somebody at the sheriff's office? You know, like for what? It happened Saturday. How would you get in touch with them Sunday, Monday? To you to call them. regular the sheriff's line and, and get with um, the patrol officers on it. Okay. Was and that then, animal uh, found? Update. They found it. They did find it. The yeah. Owner found the it or the? Owner. Well, I don't know. The, 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 um, it was Lieutenant Tarlack had told me he told that officer that that's your responsibility. What you just done there. It's your responsibility. It got posted so, on the lost and found. Did, did it get back to the owner? Mm -hmm. yes. That's the happy ending we need to hear. Yes. Oh, did you guys have something to say in the meeting? But anyway. No. Okay. No. Good. Okay. Uh, there's one more motion. I motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. I'm not going to ask for a post. We're just going. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. We'll get that information to you in an email. Thank you. Thank you.
appreciate you. Okay.